Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Ethan, and in this video, we'll explore how a hardware-based state machine can be implemented on an 8-bit microcontroller using our new signal writing port, configurable logic, and other core-independent peripherals. State machines are a common way to manage sequential behavior in embedded systems. Examples include elevator controllers, traffic light systems, vending machines, and more. They are often implemented in software. However, software-based state machines can introduce processing overhead, increase latency, potentially missing real-time requirements, or missed events in time-critical applications. Core Independent Peripherals, or CIPs, solve this by shifting state machine logic to hardware, improving response times, reducing CPU load, and enhancing reliability. CIPs like the signal routing port and configurable logic cell make this possible. The signal routing port acts as a virtual port connecting internal peripheral outputs directly to other peripherals such as a configurable logic cell without external I.O. pins. Together, they form a highly responsive state machine. The signal routing port holds the current state and updates every clock cycle, while the configurable logic cell processes inputs and state data to determine transition. The configurable logic cell's output logic then generates outputs based on the state, completing the loop. By using core independent peripherals, these tasks are offloaded from the CPU, eliminating processing overhead and enabling the CPU to handle other operations or even enter low power modes, improving efficiency and overall system performance. So to demonstrate a hardware based state machine implementation using an 8-bit microcontroller and its core independent peripherals, we'll showcase a traffic light control system where state transitions and output control are managed entirely by the hardware on the PIC-18 Q24 microcontroller. So a traffic light controller must display specific light combinations to regulate north and south and east and west bound traffic. The system controls a set of red, yellow, and green lights to indicate when vehicles should go, slow down, or stop. Also, an emergency mode is implemented in which all red lights flash on and off until the emergency signal is cleared. So, this functionality for this traffic light can be implemented as a state machine. The first step in solving a state machine is to identify the possible states, inputs, and outputs of the system. Let's go ahead and start by identifying the possible states. This system consists of five distinct states, each representing a specific traffic condition. To efficiently encode these states, we will use a 3-bit scheme. On the screen, we have a breakdown of each state. Let's go ahead and go through each of them. First, we have North, South, Go. This is when North and South traffic moves freely, while East and West must stop. Next, we have North, South, Slow. This is when North and South traffic prepares to stop, so drivers should slow down. Next, we have East, West, Go. This is when east and west traffic moves freely, while north and south must stop. Next, we have east and west slow. This is when east and west traffic prepares to stop and drivers should slow down. And finally, we have an error state. This is for emergencies or system errors, and all traffic will stop until the issue is resolved. So, now that we define the system states, we need a way to control the traffic lights accordingly. The output table on the screen defines which lights should be on or off in each state. With the states and outputs defined, the next step is identifying the inputs that control the system. This traffic light system has a single input E for error. When E equals zero, there is no emergency. The traffic lights operate normally according to the defined states. However, when E equals one, an emergency is detected. The system immediately transitions to the error state, flashing all red lights to stop traffic in all directions until the error is resolved. So now that we have the states, outputs and inputs defined, the next step is to create the state transition diagram which visually maps how the system moves between states based on input conditions. Each state is represented as a labeled circle with arrows indicating transitions that occur when specific conditions are met. Since the system operates as a more machine, the outputs depend only on the current state. Now that the state diagram is complete, we can define the state transition table, which maps how the system moves between states based on inputs and binary encoding. This table functions as a truth table with the columns representing the inputs, the current state in binary, and the corresponding next state. In this table, x2, x1, and x0 represent both the current state and the next state using a 3-bit encoding scheme. To illustrate how this works, let's look at an example. The current state 000, represents north-south go. If E equals zero, the system transitions to 001, which corresponds to north-south slow on the next clock cycle. 
However, if E equals 1 and emergency is detected, the system will immediately jump to 100, which is the error state, flashing all red lights to stop traffic. After completing the state transition table, the output logic truth table is created to define how the system controls the traffic lights. This table includes columns for each current state bit as inputs and columns for each traffic light output. Since this is a more machine, the outputs depend only on the current state. Let's look at an example. In the first row, the state 000 represents north-south go, where the north-south green light is on and all other lights are off. Now that we have the state transition and output logic truth tables complete, Boolean equations can be derived to define the logical behavior of the system. Each encoded state bit has an equation that determines how the system transitions to the next state. To simplify hardware implementation, the sum of products equations and Carnot maps for the next state logic were rearranged into product of sums form. This ensures easier mapping to logic gates. Similarly, the output logic equations are determined based on the truth table defining how the traffic lights respond in each state. So, now that we have the Boolean equations created, we need to ensure precise control of state timing. This is where the pulse width modulated corner pin and peripheral comes into play. The PWM generates long and short pulses that regulate timing. These pulses are then combined by the configurable logic cell to create a clock signal for the signal routing port, ensuring accurate state transitions and keeping everything perfectly in sync. For a full breakdown of the Boolean equations, clock logic, and timing details, refer to the code example and application note that is linked in the description below. So moving on, the diagram on screen shows how the signal routing port and configurable logic cell work together to create a hardware-based state machine with a configurable logic cell handling the logic needed for state transitions without software intervention. The signal routing port acts as a state memory, storing the current state and transitioning to the next on each clock cycle. The configurable logic manages both next state logic and output generation, ensuring transitions follow the predefined Boolean logic equations that were made. By configuring the configurable logic cells in AND OR mode, Boolean expressions are efficiently implemented in hardware, with the signal routing part holding the encoded state and driving transition. So on the screen, you can see the state machine traffic light demo running on the PIC 18Q24. The system seamlessly cycles through each state, demonstrating a fully hardware-driven implementation of a state machine. If you want more details on the logic behind this design, check out the code example and application notes linked in the description below. Also linked in the description is an overview video of the signal routing port peripheral and its peripheral landing page if you're interested. So that wraps up our video on how to implement a hardware-based state machine using an 8-bit microcontroller and its core independent peripherals. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.